We have just had a statement read by our Minister of uh, Finance, the highlights, and a full two hours of reading of the government budget for 2014-2015. I want to read a statement to you that was in the budget on page 23, which really sums up where we are today in our approach to this budget. On page 23 in the second paragraph, it says, the government has not lived within its means for many, many years. So it is difficult to wean it off bad habits. We are still living beyond our means at present and must work towards reestablishing that prudent benchmark without crashing the economy in the, pro uh, in the process. After having gone over the budget I believe it to be a well-measured and balanced approach to where we are in our history. What encourages me is that we are now looking at an overall deficit projected to be $267 million, which is 19.4% lower down from the previous year, 7% reduction in government spending, We'll be able to pay down on our national debt by $120 million. These are good things that point us in the right direction, that we are getting Bermuda on the path of recovery. I'm happy to say that the continuation of the tax concessions to the hospitality, the restaurants, and the retail sector will continue on. And more importantly, out of many of the good things that we've read out of this uh, budget, there will be no government layoffs. And so with that in mind, I'll turn it over to our Minister of Finance, Bob Richards. Bob. Thank you, Premier. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the press. <clears throat> um, I am just going to give some bullet points on the, what we talked about in the House, and um, I'll entertain any questions you have after that. Um, the first, I'd just sort of like to give you the highlights of the budget. Um, there are no new taxes, no increased taxes, uh, except for the, increase, the biannual increase of fees. The subsidies uh, to the hotel uh, restaurant, retail sectors will be continued. Uh, the tax initiatives we put in place last year will be rolled over into next year. Um, the government expenditures uh, will be reduced by 6.9% uh, uh, year over year. The deficit is projected to be at $267.3 million or a 19.4 million, 19.4 percent reduction. Uh, we don't anticipate any layoffs at all in this next fiscal year. We repaid, or we will be repaying, 120 million dollars of government bonds um, in May and June of this year. That money is already in the sinking fund. Um, and that's why we have a sinking fund, and so those those notes will be. They, they mature and they will be retired this summer. Um, the next section I want to talk briefly about is the economy. Um, we have a number of data points in the economy that uh, are encouraging, that point to confidence rebuilding in the Bermuda economy, but we still haven't got there yet in terms of uh, being on a path, firmly on a path to recovery. The, the principal macroeconomic indicators like GDP, retail sales, um, haven't shown that recovery yet. Um, particularly GDP uh, data is, is, uh, is behind. Uh, is, is we get it in a, in a lagged fashion. Um, but in any case, I'm not expecting to see a positive GDP growth registered for 2013. <clears throat> so we were, we're hoping that that will happen in 2014. Um, but so the, the real headline numbers for uh, the economy uh, haven't turned yet, but we have a lot of other indicators that show that it is turning. 
Um, the budget has been crafted in such a way uh, that the realization that it is fragile, the economy is fragile, we don't believe it can tolerate increases in taxes. Uh, that's why there have been no tax increases. We, we would love to get more revenue out of the economy, but um, you know, we cannot uh, crush the economy in the process of just trying to get revenues up. So um, that's a sort of overall view for the economy. Um, I want to make a few statements on policy. Um, the refrain of the budget, I, I, I don't know how many times I said it in the, in the formal presentation, at least three times, um, maybe more, uh, that the, um, the status quo is the enemy. Um, some people think that we can improve Bermuda, improve the economy, improve job prospects by keep doing what we're doing. We can't. And uh, some, some folks don't get it, so I'm just going to keep repeating that. The status quo is the enemy. We have to change. We have to implement changes for it to get better. And uh, uh, that's uh, what we're intending to do insofar as some of our initiatives are concerned. But this budget basically accepts the realities that we face here, that we have to change the way we do business if we're going to continue um, to be firmly on this road to recovery. You know, we sort of have one foot on that road, the other foot's still on the other road that um, is the road that we don't want to be in. Um, insofar as government stimulus is concerned, the government is tapped out. We already borrowed up to, the, up to the hilt. We can't borrow any money to do projects, to do big projects. Um, so the key point here is that in order to get stimulus, we have to use private capital from outside Bermuda. And um, so there is, there is a sort of circle that uh, people have to understand that, um, and, and the center of the circle is the government. If the government performs poorly in its attempt to get the deficit down, to try to um, eventually repay off the debt, if we don't perform well in fiscal management, then the other projects that we're trying to get going in Bermuda will be diminished because it's the same set of investors that are going to invest in a hotel, that are going to invest in an airport, that might invest in a Tynes Bay. It's the same bunch of institutional investors overseas. So the first thing they're going to do is, is to say, how successful is this government going to manage the country? And if we don't come out looking like stars in their eyes, then they're going to be really reluctant to invest in some of these private sector things. So it, it really comes down to the government. And so we're going to try to do these other things, but if we perform poorly as a government, we're going to hamper the job-creating projects that we want to get in place going forward. Um, I talked a bit about the, um, the, the hotel model, the, the, the integrated resort hotel model, and um, I have to tell you that I've been told that I misspoke on something, and I want to clear that up right now, um, that the, um, the gaming authority will not be answerable to the premier. It's going to be an independent gaming authority. So the premier will, um, will recommend X number of people. The opposition will recommend Y number of people, and the governor will recommend Z number of people, just like the Senate. And therefore, and that gaming authority will not be answerable to either one of those, to any of those, um, um, those constituencies. It will operate on its own. So I misspoke when I said that, uh, the, um, that the gaming authority would be answerable to the premier. Um, I'm very keen on um, these infrastructure projects uh, to do some job creation. I think we have a really golden opportunity, uh, particularly as it relates to the airport. Um, institutional investors overseas are, are very experienced in investing in, 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 in building new airports. So I think we can do that. And I think it's needed if we're going to take ourselves up to the next level as not only a jurisdiction for tourists, but also as a place, as a leading uh, country for international business. 
uh, that's the first impression that people get of Bermuda is when they land at the airport. And um, you know, as you, I'm sure many of you know, that airport is kind of held together by Band-Aids um, going back to the 1940s. Um, insofar as growth is concerned, uh, I've already talked about some of it, uh, the infrastructure projects, but we have to continue to encourage growth in our major sectors, i.e. reinsurance, um, asset management. Um, we're encouraging light industry to form in not necessarily uh, form of base lands, but including base lands, that's the land the government has available. Um, the Risk Institute and uh, financial services, these are areas that we're either fully engaged in or could be engaged in. We're certainly not engaged in a risk institute at the moment, but uh, I think that that's gonna be a really good adjunct to, um, to what we already do. The key thing, ladies and gentlemen, here with uh, Bermuda is that I, have to, I can't emphasize too much that everything here connects, everything. Um, and everybody's got to perform at their top level here for us to really turn this around. Um, it just can't be the government. It just can't be labor. It just can't be um, any one of the other major stakeholders in this country. Um, we have to do something that we're not accustomed to doing, and that's for all stakeholders to get along and get together and get it right. We don't have a great history of that in this island. But this is, this is the challenge that we have in front of us. Um, we've made some progress, um, but in order to really get going, um, we, we really have to, to come together to get this done. Um, <clears throat> there are gonna be no layoffs this year. Next year, uh, the challenge is much greater. And um, our plans for um, mutualization, privatization, outsourcing um, should be uh, in place by then. Uh, we are working with our uh, stakeholders, particularly the unions. We've, uh, Premier and I have talked to them just uh, earlier this week. <clears throat> we'll continue to have more meetings with them to keep them apprised of uh, our progress in this area. Some people feel threatened by this. It is not. The real threat is laying people off. That's the real threat, because we cannot sustain um, more budget cuts than what we project this year uh, and have everybody stay working for the civil service the way they are now. So we can do it this year, but next year we're going to have to um, make some adjustments. <clears throat> so somebody asked me, well, you know, why couldn't you do it this year? I think my, I see if somebody might ask me, right, sitting right here might ask me that, I'll answer that question before you ask me. Uh, we couldn't do it this year because I didn't get the Sage Commission report until October, right? And I don't have the legislation passed to, uh, to enact any of this stuff yet. So, and we don't have, um, we haven't had enough time to liaise with, particularly with the uh, public sector unions and to get um, them fully comfortable with what we're trying to do. So that's why it could not be done this year. Um, but we are gonna be working very hard in collaboration with uh, our major stakeholders to try to um, uh, lighten some of, the, uh, of the, the, the compensation burdens on government uh, going forward <clears throat> uh, so that we can uh, have some of these functions that are currently done by government don't necessarily have to be done by government. So, um, you know, that's one of the major recommendations of SAGE. Insofar as the civil service reform is concerned, that is underway, um, being led by a cabinet secretary, and um, you know, we expect to see good things coming from that. I think um, that's about it, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, Mr. Richards, you mentioned the 6.9. <clears throat> 